Welcome to the Saturday Morning Breakfast Mix, where we highlight the highs and lows of a particular Saturday morning cartoon and maybe some weekday ones that I, as well as many of us, grew up with and to show why these awesome Saturday morning cartoons made weekends and weekdays just the best and why seeing them now instantly brings back glorious memories of those carefree childhood days. In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and it brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant earthquakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through a star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing couple found the uninjured child and raised it as their own. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Empowered with X-ray vision, possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Superman appeared in the silver screens in the form of commercialized serials that aired in movie theaters between September 26, 1941 and July 30th of 1943. The show was produced by brothers Max and Dave Fleischer and was distributed by Paramount Pictures as a way to be a part of the overgrown popularity of the then new Superman comic books and current radio program that was happening at the time. Superman was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster and first appeared in the first issue of Action Comics in June of 1938 and was an immediate success. With the popularity of the comic books, a radio syndicated show was created for the New York City's WOR on February 12, 1940 and continued until March 1st of 1951, resulting in the character not only getting popular with just the readers of the comic books, but reached an even larger audience with kids and adults alike all over America. While many would believe either George Reeves, Christopher Reeves, or Kirk Allen were amongst the first on-screen representations of the iconic DC character, it was actually through Max Fleischer where audiences first started to see the character come to life on the silver screen. Superman's first moving picture appearance, animated or live action, was in this series of cartoons. With the success of the comic strips and the radio show, Paramount Studios obtained permission to make the series of cartoons based on the comic strip. They contracted Max and Dave Fleischer to produce them as the Fleischers were making cartoons for Paramount to distribute at the time. By mid-1941, brothers Max and Dave Fleischer were running their own animation studio and had recently finished their first animated feature film, 
Gulliver's Travel. When Paramount Pictures, the distributor and majority owner at the time since May 1941, had approached them on working on the Superman property. Not wanting to risk becoming overworked, the Fleischers were quietly opposed to the idea of committing themselves to another major project and sought off a way to reject the project without appearing uncooperatively by agreeing to do the series, but only an intentionally inflated per episode budget number so extremely high that Paramount would have to reject them. They told Paramount that producing such a conceptually and technically complex series of cartoons would cost them about $100,000 per short, which at the time was about four times the typical budget of a six-minute episode of the Fleischer's other popular cartoon, Popeye the Sailor. To the Fleischer's shock, instead of withdrawing his request, Paramount entered into negotiations with them and got the per-episode budget lowered to $50,000. Now the Fleischers were committed to a project with more financial and marketing support than they had ever received for any of the projects they had done before. Thanks in part of these cartoons, Superman's fame would snowball to create everlasting success and international stardom. The first cartoon of the series, simply titled Superman, also known as The Mad Scientist, was released on September 26th of 1941 and was nominated for the 1941 Academy Awards for Best Short Subject. Interestingly enough, it lost to Len the Paul, a Pluto cartoon from Walt Disney Productions and RKO Pictures. The voice of Superman for the series was initially provided by Bud Collier, who also performed the lead character's voice during the Superman radio series. Joan Alexander was the voice of Lois Lane, a role that she also portrayed on the radio alongside Collier, while Perry White was voiced by Jason Beck. Music of the series was composed by Sammy Timberg, the Fleischer's longtime musical collaborator. Rotoscoping, the process of tracing animation drawings from live-action footage, was used minimally to lend realism to the characters' bodily movements. The Fleischer cartoons were also responsible for giving Superman perhaps his most singular superpower, flight. When the Fleischers started to work on the series, in the comic book Superman would just only leap from place to place, hence the classic phrase, able to leap tall buildings within a single bound. After seeing the leaping fully animated, however, the Fleischers deemed it silly looking and with the limitations of animation was considered a heavy burden to the animators. As a result, they asked Action Comics, which would later become DC Comics, permission to have him fly instead in order to lighten the workload for the animators, which the publisher agreed and included into the comic book themselves, resulting unknowingly to become one of the most iconic staples of the comic book superpowers that would be with him throughout his entire existence in all iterations of the character. The Fleischers produced nine classic cartoons in the Superman series before Paramount took over the Fleischer Studio facility in Miami and fired Max and Dave Fleischer. By the end of 1941, the brothers were no longer able to cooperate with each other, resulting in Dave Fleischer leaving Florida for California, where he would eventually become the new head of Columbia Pictures' Green Gem Studio. After the Fleischers were removed from the company, Paramount renamed the organization Famous Studios. The sleek look of the series continued, but there was noticeable change in the storylines of the later shorts of the series. The first nine cartoons had more of a science fiction aspect to them as they were involved in the Man of Steel fighting robots, giant dinosaurs, meteors from outer space, and other perils. The later eight cartoons in the series, which were all famous studio productions, dealt with more World War II propaganda story, such as in the 11th hour, which finds Superman going to Japan to commit acts of sabotage in order to reduce the morale of the enemy. Meanwhile, an angered Adolf Hitler had a cameo role in the end of Jungle Drums after Superman foiled another Nazi plot. Now many might be surprised by the use of war propaganda, but you must understand these are a product of their time. Many of the cartoons, comics, and promotional items were created to change the way people see Hitler, Hirohito, and Mussolini. Not only did they make a mockery of the Axis powers, but they showed how people lived or worked under these regimes. For the American audience, these examples through various ways of the medium were meant to boost morale for why America was at war, but it also showed sympathy for those women and children who lived in fear against the Nazi regime. Walt Disney, Warner Brothers, and even Dr. Seuss were aiming their talents at increasing the war effort and wanted to send a message to the people to do what they can in order to support the good of the world. Sure, some could come off as offensive, that's true, but we cannot ignore history and these cartoons were made around that era in American history as an example of what was happening in the world at the time. Japa Tours was the first Superman short to be produced by Famous Studios, but was released without any screen credit to Famous Studios. The title screen credit card stated simply, Paramount presents Superman in Technicolor. 
And for those who want to know the correct order of the cartoons, they go as follows. First, the original Nine Fleischer Studio produced shorts, starting with The Mad Scientist, followed by The Mechanical Monsters, Billion Dollar Limited, The Arctic Giant, The Bulleteers, The Magnetic Telescope, Electric Earthquake, Volcano, and ending it with Terror in the Midway. And for the famous studio-produced Superman cartoons, we start with Chapateurs, Showdown, The Eleventh Hour, Destruction Inc., The Mummy Strikes, Jungle Drums, The Underground World, and end with Secret Agent. Everything from the movement and color, it just grabbed your attention. It was an action-oriented cartoon that at the time was unheard of. Cartoons before this were mostly used for comedy, only for kids. It elevated not just the medium of cartoons, but filmmaking in general. It captivated everyone, young and old alike. The fundamentals of the character is simple. He will do everything to help those in need and do what is right. It established the look of the Daily Planet to various other things that the Superman mythos still follows. A great cartoon that is still enjoyable and is miles ahead in quality than any cartoons at the time, and even to this day. A cartoon that was a major part of the creation of such acclaimed animated shows like Batman the Animated Series as well as the Superman Animated Series. Many comic writers and artists alike have been influenced by the work of Max and Dave Fleischer. Comic book artists like Alex Ross have even listed the animated shorts among the inspiration for his take on Superman's look for his pieces. This cartoon adapted the mechanics of filmmaking and pushed the boundaries of the medium and resulted in amazing visual storytelling that many could not even think of at the time. So much life in the animation, its smooth movement and design made Fleischer Studios truly a pioneer in animation. A character and cartoon show that was truly influential then and still continues to be. Because like always when it comes to cartoons we grew up with, that to truly appreciate something you have to accept its strengths and its faults. No matter what they are, to truly appreciate how amazing it was and how amazing it continues to be. Thank you so much and I'll see you all next time.